Good evening, boys and girls. Let's just do this, shall we? Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. Welcome to a brand new week. And wow. Welcome, my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev. Super Kevin Campbell. Hi, Sophie. Hi, squaddies. How you doing? We're going to have to lick our wounds and go again. So at ease and let's let's deal with it. Because that, so, that was real that was real painful. Good evening, real everyone painful. in live chat. Thanks to everyone who's joining us tonight. Uh, honestly, I I don't know where to begin. I guess I'll just begin with this. Um we <laughs> Yeah. Kev will always find a way to cheer us up, but there's I'll try. There's... I will try. Listen, it's it's difficult because there ain't a lot <laughs> there's hardly any pluses tonight, let's be honest. Hardly any. Kev, we lost the game in the first 20 minutes. We weren't at the races at we all. We weren't at the races all game. So let's just have it right. We were not at... We were... What did he just say there? I need to stop making predictions. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody makes predictions. Why, why do I need to stop making predictions? <laughs> Sophie, we just weren't at the races all day. The the hungrier team were in the ascendancy. They bullied us, they bounced us, and they battered us. Let's have it right. We could talk about all tactics. It's like I say sometimes, Sophie, it's not about tactics. You could talk about formations and tact it's about players. And they were hungrier than us you could see it how does so, that happen though kev how does it happen when you have a team um in in the arsenal who are striving for top four who saw their rivals bitch slap newcastle yesterday and we have the game in our uh, games in hand the three games you and i said that we cannot afford to lose at least take seven points is Crystal Palace, Brighton done, and Southampton. Done, yeah, we get done in the first game. Sophie, this is football. And you, you ask me how does it happen, I can guarantee you those players prepared just like they normally do. Going on the pitch, crossing that white line tonight, yeah, they had to match palace and they couldn't i agree with daniel here kev there's if there's one or two players off the boil and then there's others that make up for it you're you're okay you can get through the game but my goodness it was we just good enough yeah yeah you're right daniel's right you're right we ain't good enough to, we we can't carry to if one or two's not at it we maybe could get away with it but we're not good enough a team to get rep, you understand, to carry people. And Sophie, if I, I want all the squaddies to remember after every international break, this, and this ain't an excuse, this is sometimes what our problem is. We go into the international break and we're, we're fluid. We come out of the international break and we're all over the place. I get that, Kev, but there's a lot of teams that come back and were engaged and... I'm, I'm about and, no other I, team. I know. I'm it's just, about I just don't understand how after everything we've been through as a squad, all of the adversity we faced, you know, it's like now's the time to see what this team is made of. And they oh, failed wow. the test tonight. Can I ask you... I've got two major questions for you. I'll start with the first one. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of Arsenal fans who have questioned Kieran Tierney. Um, 
And, you know, there's been moments where he's been off the boil this season. Uh, but also, I think, you know, we, we would agree that before the international break, I think he was finding his groove again. Man, when you lose Tierney and you don't have, um, of course, Tommy Yasu, but we've seen Cedric step in and do a decent job. Kev, you don't want to see Tav Tavares being the full guy for everything because you could have substituted every single one of those players at halftime. I think Arteta's yeah. killed well, his confidence. We were Look, when you get a chance, you've got to come in and you've got to hit the ground running, Sophie. This is high-level football, unfortunately. You know, there's no room for, for, for tissues. There's no room for that, Sophie. But somebody killing your confidence, you're, you're a professional footballer. You got to get out there and you got to compete. You got to play. Is there a so, sense of? Remember, I've asked you this question before, too. Did our? Is there a level of cockiness? You you want to be cocky, but you don't want to be. You want to be confident, but you don't want to be cocky, right? And. I know that we're still a team maturing and getting together, but at some point, Arteta's team has to mature to another level, Kevin. And it's not like we were playing one of those games today where we faced the Chelsea, the Man United, the West Ham, or the Tottenham, because those games are coming. At some point, you've got to crank it up a notch and step it up. And he was embarrassed by Patrick Vieira, who I said shame on me, would be sacked by November because of how I've seen him. Look, he was a disaster at Nice. He didn't, he, he went to the playoffs with New York City FC, granted, fine, but totally different situation here to Europe as well. He got schooled today. He looked like a deer in headlights on, on the touchline today because our bench, Kev, there were no answers on the bench today, barring maybe one. Or two. Lakonga, I thought, did decent when he came on. But he looked like a deer in headlights tonight. And I think that he got schooled by Vieira. What do you think? I disagree. I disagree. I, for me, I, I honestly think if, if the team ain't at the races, well, what, what are you going to do? What, what can you do as a manager? He tried everything. He tried everything to get them going. And we could say if. We'd have nicked one of those chances. But we just weren't good enough, Sophie. We weren't good enough. So, again, schooling. Our, our, our manager got schooled. Our team our team got schooled. We got bullied today. It's just, that's just it. We got bullied. We, we weren't the hungrier team. Palace were the hungrier team today. But and that's unforgivable. We, yeah, but it's unforgivable well what what do you want to do it happens it's football. i just i just find i just think at at this point and as you know i've been very complimentary to arteta of late and he has been deserved but when the chips are down when we play the bigger sides but then when the chips are down in a moment like this against the side that's below us in the league 12th i think Crystal Palace were in the yeah. league before we met them, Kev. You've got to take the next step to show that you're there, you're getting there. Like, but this is top there. four. But yeah, this is we know. Sophie, but this is the frustrating thing. But it's different if one or two are not at it. The whole team weren't at it. The whole team weren't at it. Listen, Goonjack, I think it's hindsight 2020, right? But yes, Kevin and I always have said that we, we're still thin. Well, yeah, we said, it could. Kevin You're did right. a, a Kevin Says question on it too. Yeah. Kev's frozen in time. Can you see me? Am I, yeah, I can am see. I, moving? I, can, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> am I moving? So, yeah. Sophie, I, I particularly, second half, watched centre forward spot. I watched the centre forward spot. We had nothing. And if Laka doesn't play his game and get hold of the ball and stuff, we've got nothing. Sophie, at the top end of the pitch, we have got nothing. 
I, and that is our massive problem. Yes. Okay, so everyone, not everyone, a large portion of people coming at me in chat saying, how am I putting this on Arteta? I asked Kev a simple question. Yeah, I thought Arteta looked a little shook on the sideline going 2-0 down within the first 22 minutes of the game. He was not expecting that. Of course he wasn't expecting that. I'm giving him credit for the fact that he wasn't expecting that. He's expecting his team to go out and get a result. Now, the issue is, is that what are the answers to that? And like Kev says, in the second half, for sure. He adjusted, didn't he? We adjusted, adjusted and we went for it a little bit. If Emil Smith-Rowe buries that chance that I think I could have finished, if Udegaard takes his chance, it's 2-2. Two -two. Well, look, let's say we take one of them, Sophie. Let's say we take one of those chances. All of a sudden, the complexion of the game is different. But that's our problem, Sophie. That's been our problem all season for a, for a, for a part where we, there's times where we should annihilate teams and we don't. We win it one or two nil when really it could be, it should be four or five. As a cutting edge, Sophie, when we don't play well, we struggle. And we really struggled against the energetic, tough, strong Crystal Palace. They bullied us today, so they did. Yeah, and I listen, I totally get it. Our plays were shit today. There's no excuse for how they played and how they performed from the get-go. And we, we'll start going through the players and that will create more dialogue too here because yeah. this, this was... But the point is... At this point, with these three games coming up, how are you not playing better than that? How are you not performing better than that? String a pass together, Thomas Partey. Yeah. You know, and then Nuno he gets... He could, yeah, he couldn't I, pass water today. Jeez. I would have taken him off and put, and put Lukonga on at halftime. But no, Nuno is the one yanked again. Completely... Looks like he's taking the heat for everything. And I would have played Saka at left back. I would have I would have substituted Nuno too. He looked like a deer in headlights as well. But we crumbled under the pressure tonight. We I said it, we folded like a cheap lawn chair, Kev. And now it, it brings even more questions. So more for, pressure, more questions, more, more, questions, more, more. More, more, more. So Let's get into some of these Let's do it. players because I, I could see it being a very, very difficult one for the Arsenal players tonight. Aaron Ramsdale coming back into the side, Soph. Um, Yeah, I mean, were the goals his fault? No. no. He had no chance. The second no chance. goal was beautifully taken, especially. Mm -hmm. um, I think his defence and, you know, the, the rest of the team let him down. Made a decent save from a free kick. I think Ramsdale, you know, it was good to see him back. He gets a six. Didn't do anything spectacular, but what was he going to do? Everything in front of him was like sand instead of concrete. All over the place. Yeah, it was all over the place. And if you remember rightly, Sophie, we discussed this Arsenal side may not be as prolific at the top end of the pitch, but we're going to have to lean on our defence. Our back five, we're going to have to lean on. Yep, you've been consistent and, about that. Yeah, and we just weren't at the races, and it's not—it's not down to Rambo, that's for sure. It's not down to him. Um, look, maybe the marshalling of the day. Do you know one thing I didn't see, Sophie? I didn't see him screaming his head off. No, he wasn't even. Do you there. understand what I mean? Yeah. Normally, he's he's very vocal and he's up for it, but he seemed. He seemed a bit subdued. I, I'm going to give Ramsdale a five tonight, so I give him a five. Just, just, out, just par. I give him. Um, right. Let's move on to Cedric. So okay, Kev. Before you do that, I'd like to give you the stats. So that we had twelve shots, they had six. We had three on target, they had five. Sixty-nine percent possession to us, thirty-one to them. Six hundred and thirty-nine passes, two hundred and ninety-one. To Crystal Palace. 
86 mm percent -hmm. accuracy 71 for them 15 fouls committed by us 11 by them kev two yellows for us uh, none for them four offsides for us two for them and we had two corners cedric i thought go on kev no go sorry on, go oh on. Okay. i thought you were going to say something yeah. in response no, no, to the stats no. No. um i thought in the first I 15 thought he was our best player <laughs> yeah i thought in the first 15 minutes he was a bit wobbly but i think it's because the whole team was wobbly mm -hmm. you know what i mean but he found his feet and to be honest with you credit to cedric for stepping in and continuing to do a decent job um the defense let him down i agree thomas completely uh so for me cedric i might change ramsdale to five and i'm going to give cedric a six kev Okay, I'll change it for you. Um, for me, Cedric was our best player. So, yeah, he, and it's one of them. He's up against Zaha. And we all know Zaha could do that. To, to, could, he, could, he could skin anybody. Let's be honest. We've seen him do it in this league. Mm -hmm. But I like the way Cedric kept fighting and he kept at it. So, he kept battling. Even when it changed, he still was... Getting around and, and ferreting and, 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 and being a defender. Not to say that the people beside him were helping him much, to be honest with yourself. Um, I thought it was a tough day at the office for our defence, but Cedric was the standout performer. When our right back is our standout performer, Sophie, something's wrong. Something is wrong. So do you know what, Sophie? I'm going to give Cedric a six like you because... He had no help. He had no help. He stuck at his task. And again, I thought after a shaky 15, first 15 minutes, I thought he was okay. I, I really did. I thought he was okay without being spectacular. He'd done his job for most of it. So let's move you know, on to he, Nuno. He made better adjust, adjustments than um, than uh, everybody, everybody else. Okay. Uh... Nuno Tavares. I, and do you know what, Sophie? I, I, I don't want to be too harsh on the young man because it, it's, it's just been thrust on him again. But this is this is a, this is another cup final for us. So you've got to step up. Nuno, you've got to step up. And you look to be on your heels. You look to to me, you look to be a little bit. Frightened, if I'm honest, self. Look to be a little bit frightened of the occasion. Unbelievable atmosphere. And just weren't at the races, Sophie. He weren't at the races. And, um, you know, he got dragged off at half time. But it could have been anybody, let's be honest. It could have been any, any, it could have been anyone. But he got dragged off solely because uh, I don't think he looked the second goal really as a defender. You have to, you have to track IU. You, you, you cannot just let him get in there. And I know Gabriel made a mistake for even trying to win the ball, but he's trying to be positive. But as a defender, Sophie, your first four is my mate is going to miss the ball. My mate is going to miss the ball, so I'm going to cover him. He stopped. Gabriel didn't get the ball. IU took the ball. And it was a great finish, to be honest. But, look, I'm going to give Tavares a free tonight, Sophie. Um, everything that could go wrong did go wrong for him. And I don't want to be too harsh on the young man, but we are in it, aren't we? This is a, this is a, we're in a spot now where we're going for top four and everybody's going to really get, get some brock the neck tonight, Sophie. So I give Nuno a free tonight. There's nothing worse than seeing a young player capitulate on suffer. on the pitch and, and suffer. And again, you know, I'm not saying it's Arteta's fault here, but being taken off at Forest before even half time, the, the guy's confidence, he's a young player. Don't tell me that doesn't affect your confidence. And he's being asked to come into a very high pressured situation with Tierney, who, by the way, you guys, may be out for the rest of the season. We don't yeah. know yet. But even Arteta yeah. said in his presser, it's serious. Don't look good, yeah. It doesn't look good, yeah. right? And I just, 
I find it really difficult that he's yanked off at half time when I could have easily yanked off two other players as well. And, uh, you know, he gets a two, he was terrible. And he did leave the defense exposed as well. But um, I just think it's it's just really sad to see that. And let this be a lesson to everybody who has criticized Tierney. I criticized him for a couple games this season. Um, as you know, I hold my hands up when uh, when I do that. And, you know, sometimes players deserve a bit of criticism in terms of how they play. But then when you they're gone, you realize the value they bring to the team as well, Kev. And here we are. You know, we've been lucky that we've had a good backup at right back with Tommy being out. But that left back situation, what are we going to do now? Saka going to have to play there? You know, are we going to, is it going to be another situation where Xhaka ends up at left back again? Well, I mean, you know it's, what? So, it's a disaster, here's, Kev. Sophie, I, I, I'll be honest with you. When, when Xhaka went there, nothing came down that side. <laughs> How many times did Xhaka adjust his position in that match today, Kev? At least so three? Too, too many. So that's the problem. Too many. And it's it's a it's a tough one. Do you know what, Sophie? C Lou put up put a, uh, a a message up. He said, if we don't get our pre international break team back, we're done. And yeah. he's right. He is right. Now, Sophie, all the questions and all the pressures back on Arsenal. They've got to perform now. It's a home game. It's where they're going to need the fans at, at the Emirates even more so against a Brighton team who, who can play, but they've struggled. We've struggled tonight. We've struggled, got well beaten tonight and deservedly so. Didn't deserve anything out of the, the game. And we're all disappointed. So we, we do. Michael Arteta's got to get them back on the training ground and liven them up. Because you know what? There's a lot to play for. There is a hell of a lot to play a lot, for. A lot to play and for. We weren't, and we weren't good. We weren't good enough tonight. So let's look at Ben White. So Yeah. So, what, Jenny, did, did how, am I wanna... how am I contradicting myself? I just said I don't like seeing a young player like him suffer on the pitch like that. So that's not contradicting. He's not. That's what I just said, that we're in trouble without Kieran Tierney. What's going to be the answer at left back? Because it can't be him. He's done. He won't play ever again for Arsenal. Watch. He will not. If Pepe got benched, watch. He won't play again. Ben White, Kev. Do you want to go first yep. on Ben White? Uh, ben White, uh, I thought Mateta. Mateta, he, bu he bullied both our centre-halves. Uh, both our two... Santa Raves weren't at the races today. And do you know what it felt like, Solf? Do you know what it felt like? This felt like Brentford. Yep. Mateta was like Ivan Tony up there. Mm -hmm. Physical, aggressive, good movement. Hey, he got lucky with the first goal. 100% he got lucky. But he had to put it away and he put it away. But he never gave them a moment's peace all night. They couldn't handle him. Ben White gets a three for me, so. And he's usually a lot bit more. He's a lot better than that. But he gets a three for me. We, we were awful tonight, especially defensively. We were awful. Um, yeah, I'm going to give them both a two, Ben White and Gabriel. Uh, I don't want to hear like Gabriel just had a baby, and was probably <laughs> tired. I don't want to hear any of that rubbish malarkey, okay? I know that maybe um, Nuno didn't help things on that side, but these two know better. They've played together. They've formed a good partnership. You know, we lord them when they play well, but my goodness, they were shocking tonight. Absolutely shocking, Kev. Two. You give them both two. I, I give them both three. Um We got bullied, so we got bullied, and I don't like to see it. I don't like to see opposition centre forwards coming off smiling up the place. Oh, it used to drive me and the boys mad. The forwards mad when the opposition strikes are coming off laughing and joking because they've had a good day, and we've struggled at the other end. 
really did. It wound me up big time. Yeah. And um, yeah, there are no excuses. 100% there are no excuses. But at the end of the day, we're doing this and we have to, we have to tell it like it's it is. It's so funny, guys. This is why we do a show. Everyone's like, so a lot of people like, move on, da 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 no excuses. This is the post-game show. We analyze every single show. game. We're analyzing this. Is an, we're analyzing this. this. This is what we do here, okay? And we will move on. <laughs> you know, we've got to analyze it first and then we will move on. Trust because, me, we won't be talking. We don't want to talk about this game tomorrow night, that's for sure. <laughs> No yeah, term. exactly. Procrastinating Womble. Here we go. One, two, three. The Salaba stories for tomorrow. It's not only that. Do you know, I was sitting there seething. You know why, Kev? Because cool. in my mind, I'm like, I could see, I was getting texts already from my Tottenham supporting cousins. I could see it building on Twitter. I could hear the headline and the clickbaits from, you know, the media and all this and that. They've been waiting for this moment and we handed them the dartboard on a silver platter. And we will only have ourselves to blame. 706 so of you in live chat. If you agree with me, hit the like button because there's been nothing the I've like been able button. to ask you to hit it for prior to that. Hit the like button, please, people. We appreciate you coming to join us. Um, Sophie, let's let's deal with all that at the end because let's right. just go through the team because let's there ain't much it. to go. Fine, go on then. Honest. Who's next? Thomas Party. <laughs> Thomas oh Party. I could, okay. I could tell you now what I'm going to give Thomas Party. He gets the same as... Tavares, he gets the same as White and he gets the same as Gabriel. He gets a free from me, Sophie. It, for all of Thomas Party's quality play before international break, obviously he's he's qualified for the World Cup and all that kind of thing, Sophie. He couldn't pass water tonight. All of his passes seemed to go <laughs> be like two yards <laughs> off. He couldn't pass water tonight. He couldn't pass water. He was... Honestly, all of his passes were two yards off for some reason. Second half, when we when we changed it a bit, he got a little bit better. That's why he gets a free self. But again, these these are the players who have set the standards now, self. And you're right to call it at the start. Where how does it happen? Yeah, you you say that because they've set because they've set high standards, and that's why we are in this position and we have that. But if you don't stick, to, if you don't stick to the standards, no, we're not going to get anywhere. Thomas Party gets a free from me, Sophie, and he's well lucky said. to get a free. Do you, do you know what I was? Um, do you know what I was thinking? <laughs> I was wondering when that would come up. Um, do you know what I was thinking when I was watching Thomas Party's performance tonight, Kev? Is how many games like this did the Patrick Vieira have? even when no one knew who he was and he first arrived at the Arsenal. I'm not comparing him to the legend that became. I'm saying Patrick Vieira didn't have too many stinkers. He had, he had the kind of game today where I said about a month ago, the red card, the party's over, and Josh said, what's the point in having a Lamborghini in the garage if it doesn't have wheels? He had that performance no, no, tonight they all had it. minus minus 10 he gets a one for me for wearing the shirt tonight his passing was abysmal in my mind i'm like is he colorblind like is or it is what is what is going on how many times did he pass the ball to a crystal palace player i my mind was blown with how absolute rubbish he was i'm sorry to use that word and that doesn't mean that he hasn't been great over the last few games. But the consistency, I said it on my tweet earlier, Kev, the Premier League is all about consistency. At the beginning of the season, you asked me a question and I said, I just want to be consistent and I want to be competitive. He was abysmal. Well, we weren't that tonight, that's for sure. No. Any of that okay. tonight. Sorry. Go um, on. Granite Xhaka. So, Granite Xhaka. Who I thought done okay. At times, I, 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 at times he done okay, as you said, adjusted his position probably three times. And um... Kev, he he had no, he lost his wingman tonight. You know. Yeah. I actually Listen, thought Jacker and Cedric were our best players tonight. 
I don't even know if I can say that out loud. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, listen, um, I, I, I agree with you, to be honest with you, Sophie. I do. I agree with you. I thought Cedric was our better. Second was Granite Xhaka. That, that's the truth of the matter. Xhaka gets a four. He gets a four for you. He, he, you know what? I'm going to give Jacker a five. You know why I'm going to give him a five, So I'm going to give him a five because he adjusted to left back and we don't want to see him there. But he shut, he shut, down, the, he shut down their right-hand side. He shut it down. So, you know, and I know there was an adjustment and all that, but he's still, he still done okay for me. He gets a five. Um, and it's just going to get worse from here on in, so to be honest, because we're moving on to Emil Smith row. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Firstly, sorry I didn't put my Xhaka picture up, but I don't even care. <laughs> okay. Secondly, uh, 851 in live chat. Almost feels offensive to ask anyone to hit the like button tonight, Kev. But well, I'm if you're going to join us, you. just hit it. I oh, mean... no, if you're going to join us, you should hit it because you know what? It's painful for us as well. Let's be honest, Sov. Do a video, when, please. When I put this up tonight, that's Kev on the players, not on anything else. He's brocking players next tonight, kind of, sort of. Uh... Well, I think all the brocking neck comes now. I thought Emil Smith Rowe was most of it. shocking. That's going to be my word of the night. I thought he missed. Look, we've credited him, Kev, when he has played well. Um, and you know what? Who You better phone your form and rediscover it. Call your shooting boots and let them know that you'd like them back, please, Mr. Smith Rowe. I know we love them, Halen boys, but you know what, Kev? I'm sorry, they are not immune to criticism. No, of course not. So, and we know, listen, we know they're learning. We know they're young. And we ask, and let's be honest, Sophie, we're asking them to do the job of a far more experienced player. But this is what it is, Sophie. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what it is. So, what do you what do you give Smith Rowe? He gets a two for me. So, Kev, that two. miss in the second half. If Aubameyang had done that back in the day, even if Lacazette had missed that, which, by the way, forget about it. Like we'll get to well, him eventually. We're gonna get to him at the okay. end. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, I'm sorry. You just can't. You you just can't get away with it. It was an appalling miss that could have put the team back in the game. Yeah, um, th that that was a real chance. He had a couple, didn't he? One, I think it was Guy, he um, blocked one on the line. What a good player him he is. As well. He's a really good player. Um, you They're give him two. I'll, I'll, give him, I'll give him a three, Sophie. He had to get in the positions. I know the finishing weren't great. We could have been playing there till next week. We wouldn't have scored. Um, it's very tough to take, Sophie, because we're in a position. But do you know what? Hey, listen, we have to deal with it. We take we take the, the, the licks when they come and then we've got to move on. You know, we've got we've got bus up tonight. And um if you don't if you can't take the heat, I'm sorry. He's a professional footballer. All right. Listen, we're not molly coddling anybody here. They no, are professional footballers and we've given them credit for putting the team on their shoulders and carrying the arsenal for a long time and for many games. I am sorry. He was absolutely average tonight. They weren't, they weren't that, that good. He wasn't that good. And there's they nothing that, The team weren't that good. So. No. And yes, it's reaction. It's a reaction show. It's a post-game show, Sco. Mm. Anyway, go on, Kev. So you gave him a two. I gave him three. Martin Odegaard. Ooh. So. Now, Partey and Odegaard for me, Kev... Mm -hmm. We're actually close to getting a zero today. Oof. 860 of you in live chat. I have lauded this player. Mm -hmm. I've stood by him. And sometimes we say, let the criticism be as loud as the praise, or the pra praise be as loud as the criticism. The criticism, yeah. 
Well, it, my, it reverses today. I actually thought, right, that there was a face-off situation. You know that movie with uh, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? Yeah. I'm like, who stole Partey and Udegaard's DNA tonight? In particular, Udegaard. What happened to him? He had an absolute stinker. He was awful. Couldn't string mm. a pass together at all. And then he misses that chance in the second half. And he just doesn't shoot, Kev. He always takes one touch too many. Just shoot the ball. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. And look, you're right, so we've we've played Kev's frozen in time. Am I am I back? No, yeah, you're back. You're back. You see? Um the the, so, the gremlins so, so are even attacking the, you, even the yeah, even the gremlins are attacking us. Um Erdegaard tonight. And again, Sophie, this international, our form from international just just runs away from us and we come back and it's like we're strangers at times. We look like strangers out there. I, I, no, it was no, shocking, wasn't it? No, it's not good enough, Soph. It's not good no. enough. Listen, I'm going to give, again, there's a lot of frees flying about. Odegaard gets a free from me. What does he get from you, So, Uh... Did I give Partey a two? Yep. Yeah. No, uh, you gave him a one. Same. Same. One. For oh, wearing the one. shirt. I, I, get, I give him a three. Again, you've got to be in there to miss it. But, I mean, we weren't at the races anywhere by any stretch of the imagination. Um, let's look at Bukayo Saka, Sophie. Same. Did how better much, in the second. Did better in the second half. I mean, to be honest with you, everyone in the first half gets a zero. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was um, poor. In the in it the was second poor. in the second half, I thought Bukayo did a little bit better. But again, golden boy, and I'm not going to molly coddle him. We've lauded him when he's played really well. Um, I don't think he was as bad as Udegaard and Partey and uh, Emil. S he gets a three. I'm going to go with David Edmonds here. I'm going to say a three. Um, for for Saka, not a, not not a okay. good night for him either, Kev. Yeah, and you know what? I, These are the nights where how many times are we going to ask for him to put the team on his back and save us? He couldn't do it tonight, Kev, because he didn't. Have it was, there were two. There were too many people to carry yeah. tonight. Um, yeah. he, he, I give Saka a four. Tried hard, first half non-existent. Adjusted, moved out, swapped sides. Looked a bit more lively coming in, um, got us going, some good interplay, and that's what created a lot of the chances from our left hand side. Um, and we fluffed our lines. I'll give Saka a four. Wasn't a great performance by any stretch of the imagination, but he was a little bit better than some of the others. And um, can't expect him to carry the, uh, a lot of the, the more experienced players um, than him. So, yeah. I'll give him a four. Who are you calling sweetheart, Bill? I ain't your sweetheart. Me. He's calling me sweetheart, I think. <laughs> Bill, I'm not your sweetheart, mate. <laughs> um, they're, they're the ratings that we think the team deserves. So why don't you share yeah. yours with us, Billy? Lacquer. Lacquer. Alexander Lacazette, Sophie. One. And I've defended him to the hilt. Me too. Yep. We do he's... defend him because what he brings to the team, So, You heard us, Laka. But tonight, Sophie. <sighs> Shocking. Ooh. I mean, he can't, he couldn't even insert himself into the game, Kev. I, I'm not sure where there was to go in that first half for anybody. And in the second half, when we needed a goal from a striker, you know, we support him in that he brings other qualities to the team, the way he holds up the ball, the way he turns, the way he opens up the channels. But at some point, you do need the striker to score a goal. And this is where January might come back to bite us in the ass. Like you said, Kevin, you it said, much as much might. as I love Saka, when I, uh, uh, Laka, when I asked you, you like, no, Soph, we need a prolific goal scorer to sign in the summer. We do. Uh, look, I'm going to give Laka two. 
just because I know I, how I hard it is for you to say that out loud. Just, just well, just because I, I won, I, I'm not giving anybody one unless it's something real, real bad. Um, but he was poor, Sophie. He was poor. Um, but do you know what, Sophie? It reflected everybody. I mean, look at the look. Our highest score is six. Our lowest Whoa. is one. That did tells I give, us everything. I didn't give. Did I give Cedric a six? Yeah, kind of Cedric got that. six. Kind of want to uh, take uh, that back uh, now. But I'm doing combined. So our highest is a six, and our lowest is a one. That tells you everything. You, we, you're not going. We're not going anywhere with that, are we? You know what I mean? We're not going anywhere with that. And look. Crystal Palace defended nice and tight at the back. <clears throat> so Laka doesn't have to come deep. He's got to go up against center halves. And they just they just dealt with Lacazette tonight. It was it was, was easy for it was bullied. easy. It was it the whole team we were bullied. It was just easy for the two center halves tonight, Sophie. And, they, was, um, they were great, Kev. No, listen, yeah. you know, like Brentford slapped Chelsea. Well oh, done, Brentford. Yes. Crystal Palace slapped us. Credit to Crystal Palace. They played a great game. A great game. They executed the game plan perf to perfection. They they were they were going to be high energy. And you could imagine what Patrick Vieira said to him. Oh, all yeah. this lot have been. Yeah, I, I could see it. All this lot have been flying from all over the world. They've just come in. Let's start fast. Let's start fast. Yeah. Do you, do you remember during the week when so many people were saying Laka scored a hat trick? Someone put it in the chat, and and we were like, "Come on, let Brentford, do B. do that do that in a a match, a what real matters? match." <sighs> Who's next? Martinelli, Kevin? self. Martinelli. We've already dealt with the the first eleven. Now, you had this question on Kevin Says, and you asked who should start a Mill Smith Rowe Martinelli. And we were both of the mindset that if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But maybe the caveat should that should have been it's the international break. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> no, well, the question was should Martinelli start? Over that was the a question. Mil it was over a Mill no, Smith. It, and it no, ended up it into being. It was should Martinelli start? That was the question. And listen, we, we said it. If you ain't broken, don't, don't fix it. Because choose the same team. da de da de da de da Sophie, I don't think it would have mattered tonight who would have started with the way we played and the way Palace played. We weren't at the races. They were the hungrier team. They were quicker to the ball. They had more energy than us. They were tougher than us and they bullied us is it time it's... to start playing martinelli down the middle well do you know what sophie it, it might it might need for us to go to 442 and get laka and martinelli as a striped pair because playing that way if we're not at the races we got we've got nothing we've got no We've got no shape to halt the opposition. Because you told me the stats earlier on. When you look at the stats, Sophie, what do the stats tell you? If you didn't know the score, you would say Arsenal won the game. Yeah, but this is no, my no, data. no, 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 no. But there's a there's a really important point I'm trying to make. Palace let Arsenal keep the ball. And then when Arsenal turned it over, they just straight through us. Do you know what I mean? They're just straight through us. Vieira so, knew how to beat us, Kev. Sophie, Vieira, we're talking about experienced people here. If Arsenal play to their capacity and Palace play to their capacity, Arsenal win. But when we don't play to our capacity, we struggle tonight. We struggled tonight, really. We really struggled. And we, nobody wanted to see this, so. Nobody wanted to see us struggle like this, especially after Spurs won yesterday. Nobody wanted to see us struggle like this, but we did. 
We did. And I think Gabriel Martinelli, he, he does, listen, he looks lively, he's sharp on, on all that. Again, maybe we, we, we're looking to, too much on these youngsters. And I know how talented they are. And I know it's not fair on them, Sophie. But it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. At the end of the day, we are putting... We're putting our aspirations on the youngsters. And I, for me personally, well, it, it's, 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 it's always going to be tough. That's why you have to lean on that defence. But Kev, we've got the youngest team in the Premier League. We don't have a choice. No, I know we don't. But I'm, all I'm saying is, I didn't, want, I, don't, I didn't want it to be that way. But it's turned out that way. That's all. I'm not. Not. And we when can't some change Arsenal, it. when some Arsenal fans were critical of the January window, you know, a lot of people kind of went at them. But there's still more nine more games to go. We've lost Tierney now. Who knows when Tommy Yasu is going to come back? Our bench tonight was so thin. Pepe was sick. You know. I mean, it's. It's and we haven't we haven't been through a bad phase really since the beginning of the season, and other teams like Tottenham are finding their form now. They went through their bad phase. We we can't afford to be going through a bad phase now. Well, Sophie, this is why when we get to the end of this, this is why we're going to talk about what happens at the weekend. Because and I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna touch on it and then we're gonna speak about it tomorrow. Yeah. But what do you I give read... Martinelli? Um, I, f I don't know. He he brought up he brought a lot of energy when he came on. He's a very special player and he's the type of player in most teams who would start. I'll give him a three. Didn't really, you know, three or four, four. I'll give him four. a four. I, I I'm giving him a four. Um, Eddie. Sof? Um Eddie, I thought he came on and within the first three touches, he put that cross in and Udegaard should have scored. Mm -hmm. True. And he hit the bar with a, and with he, a great... And he, and he hit the bar. Great, I thought, uh, you know... I mean, if we're going to play like this up front, what do we have to lose to give him a shot? And I'm not a fan. I've been wanting him to leave since, like, last season. But... You know, credit where it's due. He came on and he really gave it a crack. Well, I gave him my head. I said, I give him a four. Uh, he hasn't got a lot. He hasn't got a lot going for him. But I thought he tried. He tried hard. Was unlucky to hit the bar. Good effort. And um, I gave him a four. So what do you give him? I give him the same. Yeah. I want to put some um, ratings up. I want to read this real quick because we're going to get onto the manager. We made it impossible. Thank you, Matty K. We made it impossible for ourselves. We were really poor, really inconsistent on the ball. At that level, it is unacceptable, says Mr. Arteta. Um, so, yeah, Kev, carry on. I'll put some Eddie Sambi. scores up. We've got Sambi last. Just got he's Sambi getting a lot last. of love, by the way, Eddie. Um, from Because yeah, he had a goal. He had a goal, so. And... Let's be honest, he done more than Lacazette. That he, the little bit he was on, he done more than Laka. Yeah, he did. Do you know what I mean? So Laka needs to be benched now. I can't defend it anymore. I really I can't defend uh, we need goals and you know, we need to bury chances. We need to put, our, put ourselves into position to score. And I think Lacazette is suffering from a little lack of confidence too because he feels the weight of the world on his shoulders. But I don't know. Uh, Lukonga, so, I thought, did decent, yeah. Kev, when he yeah. came on. Yeah, he's, he, he had quick feet. He, he passed it forward, which was really good. Some really good balls into the edge of the box and stuff like that. Uh, listen, I'm just going to give... I'll give him a four as well. So Me too. I'm just not... Yeah, and yeah. Um, and the manager, I give him a four tonight. So I'm sorry, but okay. So Kev, I think and that I know, and I know, I just want to say this, and I know, yes, he's the manager, and the players have to do it. But we're all in this together, right? So he gets a four as well. 
So um, I thought that he should have taken Thomas Partey off at halftime and brought on Lukonga because we had nothing to lose. He was so rubbish. I mean, he, you know, he should have subbed him off or at least earlier in the second half and brought on Sambi earlier. He was, Thomas Partey was just awful. And he should have brought on Eddie earlier, I thought, at that point. He gets a, Arteta gets a two. Arteta gets a two. Okay. I mean, we lured him, you know, have when we're winning, you, when we're you winning, stand we by give him, him the, and whatever. When, yeah, when, when but, we're winning, we give him, we give him the praise. How was that team not up for that game tonight? You always say the buck stops with the manager and then with the players as they cross the white lines. And you and I have always been of the ilk that, you know, it's they 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 like it's a team sport. It's not individuals, right? It's unfortunate that a young it's a team player like played by, you know, play by individuals, right? So right. The issue is this, Sophie. If a few players are off, Boyle, you could maybe make up for it. You could patch it up. But when the highest mark is a six and it's for your fullback, we've got no chance, Sophie. Mikel Arteta, I'm sure, he's probably going to be thinking, what's, what's, what's going on? What's going on? But... This is what tends to happen to us, especially after international. Now, this Brighton game now, Sophie, is huge. Yeah. Whoever needs to be, whoever needs to be, get some treatment. Go and get some treatment and get yourself going because you know what? Talking the cup final, Sophie, this is our next hurdle. And we need to see this team respond. Because tonight is nowhere near good enough for Arsenal Football Club. Nowhere near. Well, Partey's injured now too. By the way, boy, I thought that was a really good point. He's been, Partey especially has been a stinker when he gets back from international breaks, for sure. Uh, Kev, you're absolutely right. Uh, Brighton, granted, have um, not been in great form of late. But there's no Tommy. There's no Tierney. There might be no Thomas Partey. Lacazette is completely off the boil, even doing the things that were working for him, despite the fact he wasn't scoring goals. Um, Udegaard needs to pick himself up big time. Uh, you know, the now team. The, the, whole, the, whole, the whole team. Who's going to play left back uh, if... This is this is going to be us now going forward. Um, I mean, Arteta, this, really, this is where you manage. Sorry. Well, here, here, here's one for you, so Here's one for you. Maybe we might see Tommy Arsenal back on right back and Cedric left back. Because Cedric still could play left back. For the sake of the game on Saturday, I would play Saka at left back. Because I think Cedric, I get it, and he's very versatile. But because of the fact that we cannot afford to lose that game at all, I would play Saka at left back. And hopefully if Pepe's feeling better, I'd put him in the Saka role and I would play Martinelli and maybe just give Eddie a shot up front. Can always make a sub, Kev, if, if it's not working. Mm. But I don't think, I think Lacazette needs to start on the bench. You know, if you want to have a Mill Smith row still and give Gabby a shot up front and have Gabby uh, and have ESR, Gabby and Pepe, or you could do Gabby, Eddie and Pepe. So can I ask can I ask a question? When you yeah. say we we say we got to win that game, so you're going to play Saka left back? I don't understand that. But... Because he's the one I trust the most to play in that position. I I think Jacka could get exposed completely. Yeah, but I'm not saying play Jacka there. I'm saying play Cedric there. But I just I just we haven't seen Cedric play there. We have. 
Of course we have. At left back? Yeah, of course we have. Played, Consistently? Played right back and left back. He's played but, for Arsenal. But I just think the game's too important to super experiment when we know Saka is deputised in that position and does a great job, great job, and allows us a bit more width. I know everyone's like, then you nullify our attack, but, yeah, but we Sophie, can attack from all positions of the pitch. But Sophie, Saka's, Saka's one of our top goal scorers playing at the top end of the pitch. But, but We're hurting Kev, ourselves by playing him at left back, in my opinion. Be, we have to be adaptable. And I think that we have to start that way and we can tweak things. I just, I, I, this is going to be the biggest conundrum of all. And I know we're going to get more into it tomorrow it night. Tomorrow, yeah, um, it is. You know, is. Kev, because what we, that's going to be the biggest question tomorrow night for everybody and we could get stuck into it nuts and bolts, mm. you know, big time. But, I mean, there are a lot of people that agree agree with you. Some agree agree with me. Um, it's not waving the white flag. Beggars can't be choosers, guys. We have to be adaptable. And we've said on this show so often, we're two injuries away from disaster. And we got, we got those injuries. Darren That's says awkward. Saka, hold, Gabriel holding white, Cedric. I mean, you know. When Saka scores 20 goals, he's a winger. <laughs> Play three at the back. We're all intrigued. His hips aren't wide enough. Who? I don't know what you're talking about there. I don't know. I'd rather stick with Arteta's system and tactics. He's the manager after all. Oh, gosh. We all know that, Virginia. But we have look, a bit of a We're just saying here. about personnel, aren't we? We're just, Virginia, we're just talking about personnel. And it didn't work and, for him and everybody tonight. Has their, and everybody has their, has their opinion, which is fine. Um, for me, I'd like to, if we, it's a must-win game, I'd like to see Saka in his, in his natural position. That's where I want to see him. He's joint top scorer at our football club. And I want to see him at the top end of the pitch doing what he does. That's me. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow night, okay? Yeah. There's yeah. not much more to say about tonight. Tonight, We're going to sleep on this. It's an awful one. And yeah, tomorrow we're going to start looking ahead to the weekend. We'll have a little bit more news about the injuries and where we're at with certain players. And then we will have a real, raw and honest chat about how we approach this Brighton game. Okay, we're going to look around the table and see what's happening. We'll look at a few of the other, other games. Kev and I both predicted a win for this one. And oh, I, I, I could see... I could, well, Numa's already jumped on it. Kev, tell Kev to stop predicting. Numa... Shut up. Jesus. <laughs> Everybody's I mean, done the predictions. <laughs> it's not easy doing shows like this uh, because as, you know, we both are gutted that we lost, but we're also, thank you, Neil and everyone, we're being very honest about the fact that collectively as a group, we sucked. We stank the joint out, mm -hmm. you know? And Starman um, was the fans who were brilliant again. And Patrick, Patrick Vieira. The Arsenal fans were brilliant tonight. As well, the Arsenal fans were brilliant. Pity that didn't, the team couldn't reflect them. Yeah, and we will stick together. We are sticking together. But tonight when we needed to kickstart these next three games, Alan, and get a result, we failed. Let's be honest. We failed big time. And we got a bounce back because you don't want this seeping into the team and that confidence, right? Kev, I mean, it's a tough one. And you, it's, go on, Kev. Uh, again, you know, whether where, someone's just put there, there's a, Arteta's too arrogant because our, our squad's small because Arteta's arrogant. No, come on. You know, you could say he's arrogant or confident or whatever, but that hasn't, that hasn't stopped us getting where we need to get to. We are in the position and now, some of that cushion that we had, Sophie, is not there anymore. No. That's the thing. You know, we're, we're level points with, with that lot, but we've got a game in hand. So we're still, in theory, it's still in our hands. But that's why we're going to discuss where, how we move forward tomorrow, because it's important. We better dust ourselves down. Players, go home. 
Look at yourselves in the mirror. Tell you, look at yourselves in the mirror. And for the next nine games, don't want to see anything anywhere near that nonsense performance tonight. That was a joke. That really was a joke. Weren't fit to be Arsenal Football Club tonight. But you know what? You've 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 got us in this position, guys. Come on, it's time. Snap out of it. International's gone. Get some rest. Next team be Brighton. That's who we've got to sort them right out. Well said, um, Super Kev. This is where the players and the manager will earn their crust. And the manager needs to manage the players back to confidence and figure out how he's going to get through these next games um, with the injuries that we've can clearly picked up. Thomas, forget about the penalty. That wasn't, wasn't a penalty. penalty. Wasn't. It just so. wasn't even close to being a penalty. Thank you, Tammy. Um, unfortunately, I have to do this. Our good friends at Football Prizes have a new auction up this week. You never guess who it is. I'm so sorry, guys. Don't shoot the messenger. Well, it's fitting. Okay? It's quite fitting, isn't it? It's quite okay. fitting. Kev's, Kev's spinning it, which I love. Positively. No, it is quite fitting that it's him. It's Patrick well, he's, Vieira. He's, he's, he's our guy. He's our legend, isn't he? He's our legend. And he's done a number on us tonight, so with his team. Fair play to him. We don't like it, but we love him, so... If you enter as well, there's a prize that you could win um, of 13 prizes. And the other one is Tony Adams, by the way. So go get your ticket today. Patrick Vieira on your wall. And there's a chance that you could also go into a draw to win the, the Tony, Tony Adams. Adams signed shirt as well. That's I mean, nice talk one. about double, double, double. bubble. Jeez. The yeah. captains, the captains. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, look, you know. I keep thinking of Tommy Lee Jones in uh, The Fugitive, you know, when he wants to catch uh, Harrison Ford so bad. He goes, I want you to check every outhouse. Do, 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 do. He does that mega speech. And I feel like that's what Arteta needs to do at training tomorrow. You know, like. Oh, we'll have a, he'll, have a, he'll have a meeting with them. Don't worry yeah. about that. Right. You know, um, cause sometimes tonight, it might not sink in when let, let, you, you say you're a bit after the game, but emotions are running a bit wild. Come in tomorrow, then you yeah, tell them. Exactly. Um, I will show the Jags pitch uh, picture tomorrow, guys. Just tonight, we're going to leave it for tonight, and um, we'll we'll show you the picture of Jags with his uh, new prize tomorrow night. Uh, Kev, I will be on Sky Sports early kickoff tomorrow morning. What time you on, Self? 7.30 a.m., Kev. I will be well, on. I'm on, set, I'm on BBC Live <laughs> at 7.15. So there you go. We're, we're the early birds. We're the early birds, Self. Catch Kev on the BBC and catch me on Sky Sports early kickoff as well. Kev, 5.15, you said? No, 7.15. 7.15. 7.15 yeah, so on I'm the on, I'll, show. I'll be on for about five minutes. Okay, five fantastic. Minutes or so. And then I'll whiz across and, and check you out. Fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Um, I know that this is going to be an interesting conversation for, for both of us tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. So catch us both. The Highbury squad is uh, busy, busy, busy. Uh, right. Super Kev, take us out. You and I will be back live tomorrow night for more. Right, squaddies. I know it's a difficult one tonight and you're not happy. We're not happy. But you know what? It's still in our hands. Still in our hands with nine games to go. So, whatever you do, know that we love you. Keep it in the like button on the way out if you haven't hit it already. And you know what, squaddies? Take it easy and we'll see you tomorrow. At ease, squaddies. Good night, my fellow gooners. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>